What do we want to get out of decimal division? When we divide decimals, we would like to get a decimal for our answer, and we'd like to undo decimal multiplication. So let me put up a simple example of decimal multiplication. If we multiply 3.15 times 2, I will have 3.15 times 2, 10, 3, 6, two digits after the decimal point. That extra trailing zero isn't doing anything for us. We get 6.3. So we would like to find that 6.3 divided by 2 gives us 3.15. And the first thing that might occur to us is to think of what happens in the fraction division. What does happen? Well, 6.3, that's 63 tenths, divided by 2, that's 2 whole things. Right, that's 63 tenths times one-half, that's going to be 63 twentieths. That doesn't look like 3.15. Is that the same as, let's see, 315, and then the denominator will be 100? Hmm. Well, if I take 63 twentieths and multiply the numerator and denominator each by 5, I'll get 100 for the denominator. Let's see, 63 times 5, 15, 31. Okay. 315 hundredths. Okay, yes, but, but there's no obvious way to come up with the 315 hundredths if I didn't already know about it. Instead, we're going to use the procedure called decimal division. In decimal division, first we make sure the divisor is a whole number. Make sure we're dividing by a whole number. And then we just divide exactly the same we do whole numbers, except remember that we're allowed to add trailing zeros after the decimal point without changing anything. And where does the decimal point go in the answer? The decimal point in the answer goes right above the decimal point in the dividend. So remember that we know that 6.3 divided by 2 is 3.15. How would we find that out? Our divisor is 2. That's already a whole number. I'm going to divide it into 6.3. Decimal point in my answer goes right above the decimal point in my dividend. 2 goes into 6 three times. Bring down the 3. 2 goes into 3 once. I have 1 left over. Now in whole number division, I would have just stopped at a remainder. But I can't do that in decimal division. Why not? Well. Giving a remainder is one way to have something left over. But expressing that as a fraction is another way to handle it. Since I'm already working with a decimal, I'm already committed to handling this as a fraction in decimal form. So instead, I add a trailing zero. Notice 6.3 and 6.30 are the same number. I add a trailing zero, bring it down. 2 goes into 10 five times. 
Now there's nothing left. And my decimal division is done. Okay, so my first step I said to make sure the divisor is a whole number. What if it isn't? What if I wanted to take, for example, 0 0.372 divided by 1.2. Let me write that in fraction form. Right? This will give me a complex fraction. If I want to change this so that my divisor is a whole number, that is, so my denominator here is a whole number, well, I would need to multiply that denominator by 10. So I need to do the same thing to the numerator. So 3.72 over 12. This is the same as 3.72 divided by 12. What have I done? I've multiplied the divisor by 10. But in order to do that, I needed to also multiply the dividend by 10. OK, let's see what we get here. 12 goes into 3, 0 times. Into 37, 3 times, because 3 times 12 is 36. 1 left over. 12 goes into 12 exactly once. Nothing left over. So apparently, 0 0.372 divided by 1.2 equals 0 0.31. I could check that by multiplying 1.2 times 0 0.31, uh, 2, 1, 6, 3, add them up, 2, 7, 3, three digits after the decimal point. That worked. I could also check that by doing the division on my calculator. 0 0.372 divided by 1.2, I get 0.31, just the same as I did before. 